Number 21, calculate the standard cell potential for each reaction below and note whether the reaction is spontaneous under standard state conditions. Okie dokie. So we just want to find a standard, standard, standard cell potential, which is a E cell. Now it's going to be this E little notch at the top, like the degree sign uh, cell, because that just means standard. So under standard state conditions. So we got to find an E cell. Now an E cell always comes from oxidation reduction reactions and oxidation reduction reactions are all coming down to charge differences, right? It's the change in those oxidation states. Now I went to the back of the textbook because we do have to find actual E values for half reactions. And what I did for you guys is I found the right ones that are used in this question. But now the question is, well, how do we get to know which values are we, are we gonna use and where? Well, as you can see in the half reactions, I need to see some charges, right? That's what oxidation reduction reactions are. But I don't see any charges here, so I have to make them. Remember, anytime that you see aqueous, these are ionic compounds that are going to dissolve in your solution and they're gonna dissolve in the ions. So for every compound that I see, I know that I'm going to have two ions. Now, when you do this, I do not care how many ions I have. I don't care that there's three compounds. That's not the point here. The point is to just know what each individual charge was, not how many I got. So for example, FeNO32, I know that I have a nitrate, right? NO3, how many times have we seen this throughout our whole chemistry careers, right? So nitrate's not going anywhere. NO3 always sticks together. So it would just be an iron breaking off with the nitrate. Same thing here. I have now a gold, AU, with NO3. So those are my two components. And then I got the iron back again. So here we go, iron with the NO3 but I need to do a little better. I need to find out what the charges are. And that's when we go all the way back to the first part of chem where we crisscross the subscripts to get back the charges, right? There's one iron for two nitrates. This one crisscrosses up telling me that nitrate is a negative one and the two crisscrosses up telling me that the iron is a plus two. Let's just do the same over here. So I have a one and a three. So the one crisscrosses up telling me that the nitrate is again a negative one. The three goes up to the AU, so that's a positive three. Last one, a one and a three. So I crisscrossed up, negative one for the nitrate, and the three goes up to the iron, so it's a plus three. And just to have everything on an even playing field, this is only one element, so it's just gonna stay AU. Now for your oxidation reduction reactions, you only take note of things that change. But if I just go right across the board with nitrate, nitrate and nitrate, literally nothing has changed. It's all NO3s and it's all a negative one. So this plays no part in oxidation reduction. Get rid of it, no one cares. Now let's see, I'm gonna bring this yield sign down just to know what is the beginning and the end. And let's just see what's going on here. Well, I have the iron changing state. Started off with a plus two and it ended off at a plus three. So that's important to know. And let's see, did anything else change? Oh yeah, the AU changed. Remember, anytime that you do not have a charge in the upper right-hand corner, it's automatically a zero, but only for elements. So it's gotta be just an element by itself. But in this case, you started off with a plus three and you went to a zero charge. Now, do you notice here that when I went to the back of the textbook to find out the right half reactions, Take note as to the charges because some of them, for example, iron, I think iron maybe has like three half reaction 
uh, ones to look at. You got to pick the ones in which has the correct charges. I wanted a plus two and a plus three. And then the uh, gold, I wanted the plus three one. So these were all picked for you. But now the question is, what's the formula? The formula is this. E cell always equals cathode, the cell potential of the cathode, minus the cell potential of the anode. I just like to always say cathode minus anode, cathode minus anode. And remember, reduction happens at the cathode in galvanic cells, and that's always when you become more negative. Versus an anode, oxidation always happens at the anode, that's when you always become positive. So now let's hook up these charges and see, well, which one is the cathode and which one is the anode? Let's go with the iron first. It went from a plus two to a plus three. Are you becoming more positive or more negative? Yeah, you're becoming more positive. And if you're becoming more positive, that's the anode. So your iron number is going to go with the anode side. Let's just make sure that we have it right for the cathode. AU went to a plus three down to a zero. That's becoming more negative. And more negative is always the cathode. Okay. So now I have my E values that I'm going to link up with the AU and the iron. Now just know that if you're using cathode minus anode, not cathode plus anode, if you're using cathode minus, you never have to change these values that are in the back of the textbook. And I just like to use that because it just makes it easier, right? So the AU number should go first. That's the 1.498, and I'm gonna minus that with the iron one, which is the 0 0.771. Let's plug it in. Let's see what we get. 1.498 minus 0 .7, whoop, 0.771 and 0 0.727, and that units is volts. So there is that cell potential. Now we just got to figure out, well, is this spontaneous or not? That comes from the sign of your E cell value. If you have a positive E cell, that reaction's spontaneous. If you got a negative E cell, that's non-spontaneous. This value is a positive value, and that means that this is going to be spontaneous. Simple as that. What'd you think? There you go. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. I love talking to you guys in the comments. I love seeing how you guys are doing on your tests, your quizzes, studying wise, or just telling me how your day's been. Um, I will talk to you later and hope you, hope you do well on your tests and quizzes, all right? Practice, practice, practice. You guys got this. See you later. Bye-bye.